Hi, I'm Doc Stoder with XSA International, and in this video, I'm going to show you the proper method of applying a pressure dressing to a wound with or without arterial bleeding. First, you need to remember your body substance isolation. Always wear gloves because it's just not worth the risk. Minor arterial bleeding can often be controlled simply through the use of pressure dressings, and for all other means of bleeding, it's the only method to control bleeding. Obviously, you don't want to put a tourniquet on venous bleeding. There's just no need for it. Pressure dressings encourage the body's natural responses to control bleeding through the means of clotting. It helps your body to actually clot itself. It's important not to forget that people can bleed to death in as little as two minutes. The loss of two to four pints of blood will result in disorientation, shock, and possibly even death. That's only one to two liters of blood, so you need to stop that bleeding fast. Be sure to use a bandage that's large enough to cover the entire wound. Unless contraindicated by another wound, you need to use elevation and direct pressure to help and control the bleeding to encourage remaining blood towards the heart to maintain its proper function. Wrap a wound always from the distal end to the proximal end, meaning you wrap it from further away from the heart, you wrap it towards the heart. You're going to encourage that blood not to pull in the distal end of the limb, instead you're going to encourage that blood to flow back towards the heart. Understand how a pressure dressing works. The maximal effect of the ACE bandage that's sewn onto these is maintained through overlapping the bandage medially, okay? There's a right way and a wrong way to do everything, and by wrapping these bandages correctly, you're going to exert more pressure than it would just by itself. You can cross a bandage over itself over the wound site to encourage a greater effect directly over the bleed. Be sure to check that your compressor dressing has not impeded blood flow to the rest of the limb. You need to check for a good pulse and satisfactory capillary refill after you apply the bandage. If the pressure dressing fails to control the bleed, follow your instinct and decide whether or not a tourniquet is a better choice instead of a pressure dressing. Just like your tourniquets, you need to stock your compression dressings so that they're easily accessible and be sure to carry along with you extra 4x4s and Curlex gauze for packing and stuffing wounds according to their nature so you can leverage the pressure dressings effects. As with any bleeding patient, monitor them closely for shock as well as an altered level of consciousness. I'm Doc Stoner with XSA International and thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have questions you want answered, let us know. Send us an email or visit our Facebook page.